In this lecture, you will learn how an asynchronous JavaScript code gets executed behind the scenes and what are event loops. Before that, let's have a quick look on the JavaScript runtime environment for the browsers. You can consider a runtime environment as a container which includes all the necessary pieces to execute a JavaScript code. A JavaScript runtime environment for the browsers consists of JavaScript engine, web APIs, callback queue, and event loops. A JavaScript engine is the heart of JavaScript runtime environment. And this JavaScript engine consists of a heap where the objects are stored and a call stack where the code is actually executed. Now, a JavaScript is a single threaded programming language. That means it can execute only one statement at a time. So JavaScript does not have multi-threading capabilities like any other programming languages such as Java or C++. Now you might ask, if JavaScript is a single threaded programming language, that means if it executes the JavaScript code line by line, then how does asynchronous program works in JavaScript? Well, that's where the web APIs come into picture. These web APIs contains all the functions and APIs which can run asynchronously in the background. And this web API is not a part of JavaScript engine. Instead, it is provided by the browsers. So a web API provides us the APIs which runs asynchronously and which can be used in our JavaScript code. Then we have event loops and callback queues. A callback queue contains the callback functions which need to be executed and these callback functions comes from events. For example, when we use setTimeout function in our code, we have to specify a callback function which will get executed after a given time interval. So when the time interval which we have specified for the setTimeout function is complete, the callback function will be handed over to this callback queue where it will wait for its execution. And the job of event loop is to push these callback functions to the call stack for their execution. An event loop will push a callback function in the callback queue to the call stack only when the call stack is empty. That means all the functions have, have completed their execution and have returned. So once the call stack is empty, the event loop will push the callback functions from this callback queue one by one inside the call stack for their execution. So this is a brief overview of JavaScript runtime environment for the browsers. Now let's understand how an asynchronous JavaScript code gets executed behind the scenes. Here we have a call stack, web API, callback queue and we also have a simple JavaScript code which we will use as an example and consider this box as browser's developer console. Now when we run this program in the browser, first of all a global execution context will be created and from this global execution context we are calling this console.log function. So an execution context for this console.log function will be created on top of the global execution context. All right, and it will log the message good morning user in the developer console. And once its execution is complete, it will get popped off from the execution stack. Then we are calling this set timeout function and we are specifying a time interval of 2000 milliseconds. And we have also specified a callback function which should get executed after this time interval is complete. So an execution context for this set timeout function will be created and it will be handed over to the web API. Now this set timeout function will sit in the web API and it will do its job. And what is its job? Its job is to wait for 2000 milliseconds. And the callback function which we have specified for the set timeout function will be registered and it will also wait in the web API. So this setTimeout function is now executing in the background. 
asynchronously and what is the background the background is nothing but the web api so this set timeout function it's is doing its job in the web api and since it is working asynchronously javascript engine will not wait for its execution to complete and it will move to the next statement here again we are making a call to console.log function so an execution context for it will be created it will log the message have a nice day in the developer console and once its execution is complete it will get popped off from the execution stack and then we are calling this fetch api so again an execution context for this fetch api will be created and this is also run this will also run asynchronously in the background so it will be handed over to the web api where it will do its job and what what is its job its job is to load data from the url which we have specified for this fetch api and we have also specified a callback function for this fetch api when the data which it is requesting is completely loaded so when the data which we are requesting using this fetch api is completely loaded then this callback function will get executed so this callback function will again get registered and it will wait in the web api so now the execution of this program is complete now let's say this set timeout has completed its job that means the 2000 milliseconds has been completed so now it will be removed from the web api and the registered function for this set timeout function will be handed over to the callback queue this callback function will wait for its execution inside this callback queue so it will wait for this call stack to get empty and once the call stack is empty then this event loop will push this callback function to this call stack for its execution currently this call stack is empty because we don't have any execution context for any function here okay so this call stack is empty so this event loop will push this callback function to this call stack for its execution now from this callback function we are calling this console.log function so another execution context for this console.log function will be created and it will log the message hello world in the developer console and once its execution is complete it will get popped off from the execution stack and with this the execution of this callback function is also complete so it will also return and it will also get popped off from the execution stack now if fetch api if you remember returns a promise and with promises things works in a slightly different way the callback functions related to promises does not get executed does not wait inside the callback queue instead it waits inside another queue which is called as micro task queue so a callback function of a promise waits in the micro task queue all right so let's now say that the job of this fetch api is complete that means the data which it has requested is completely loaded all right so now it will be removed from the web api and the callback function which which we have registered for that promise will be pushed to this micro task queue now always remember that the micro task queue has a priority over callback queue that means the callback functions which we have in micro task queue will be executed first all right so let's say we have callback functions inside this callback queue as well as the micro task queue so the callback functions of this micro task queue will be executed first and when all the functions all the callback functions of this micro task queue are executed then only the callback functions of this callback queue will get executed and a callback function uh, of a promise always gets executed inside this always you know gets stored inside this micro task queue so now this event loop will push this callback function to this call stack when the call stack is empty so currently this call stack is empty so this event loop will push this callback function to the call stack for its execution and again from this function 
we are calling this console.log function so an execution context will be created for that it will log the response which this fetch api has returned and will get popped off from the execution stack and since the execution of this callback function is also complete it will also get popped off from the execution stack so in this way we have executed two asynchronous javascript codes in our program this set timeout function and this fetch api so let's recap what we have learned when we have a function which runs asynchronously that function gets handed over to the web apis and it does its job inside the web api and the callback function attached to that function gets registered and it waits inside the web api when job of that asynchronous function is complete the registered callback function is pushed either to callback queue or micro task queue now in most cases the callback function is pushed to callback queue but in case of promises the callback function of a promise is pushed to micro task queue and there these callback functions wait for their execution okay so when the call stack is empty then event loop pushes the callback functions from the micro task queue as well as callback queue to the call stack for their execution and the callback functions of micro task queue takes priority over the callback functions of callback queue so i hope this lecture has helped you understand how actually the asynchronous javascript programs gets executed behind the scenes if you like this lecture like this video subscribe to this channel and share it with your friends